I am Wendy Goodfriend, producer of KQED's food blog, Bay Area Bites, and I'm here with Emmanuel Hapsis, producer of KQED Arts, The Writer's Block, to talk with Julie Powell about her new book, Cleaving. Welcome, Julie. I'm so happy to be here. We usually ask our guests to hold a symbolic prop alongside their book. Okay. So we just happen to have one here. Oh, nice. Con convenient. <laughs> Murderous. I got it. <laughs> ah. Has that happened to you before in an interview? Uh, um, to be handed a cleaver? Uh, no, no, actually. But, um, but I have held my own quite a bit. But this is a nice one. It's 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 petite, actually. I like that. <laughs> so to begin with. I'm wondering what restaurants you have eaten at since you've been in the Bay Area, or where you plan to eat while you're here. Oh, that's an excellent question that I can't answer. I <laughs> ate, um, I, where did I eat last night? I'm staying at the Clift Hotel on Geary, and I ate at the closest Mexican place, which was, um, shoot, I can't even remember. I want somebody to take me out to someplace awesome tonight, because I have no idea, and I love, every time I come to... San Francisco, someone takes me someplace amazing, but I'm an idiot about where those places are, so I can't name them. But uh, it's one of the great eating towns I've ever experienced, so very excited. Give me, give, give, give me tips. Okay. <laughs> we'll give you some tips after the interview. I'm glad. I, I, want, I want to hear. We'll take care of you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also wondering if you're planning to visit any um, Bay Area butcher shops while you're here. I would love to if I get a chance. I, I you know, I... I think that uh, uh, I think that uh, it's one of the great spots. Uh, the the whole uh, butcher butchering is, is is this thing that's experiencing this amazing. As I flail around my knife, uh, experiences amazing resurgence, and and especially on the coasts uh, in New York and 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 on California, and I think there are some amazing people out here that I'd love to visit if I get the chance and there, I, people just turn me in a direction and I go there right now but I would love to visit some great anybody in particular you have in mind um you know th there's a, a there are a couple of uh, I, I can't I can't tell you names because I'm an idiot but uh there, there are a couple of women out here that have a great butcher shop that I would love to to visit okay so it, recently we interviewed Jonathan Seffron Foer about his book, Eating Animals, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how, despite what many people think, meat enthusiasts and vegetarians have more in common Absolutely. than you would think. And, Absolutely. Absolutely. And that they both want to move towards a, you know, anti-factory farming, sustainable... Yes, exactly. I, you know, I, I, he and I are published by the same company. Uh, we, we're... Um, we're both published by Little Brown and, in fact, have the same publicist. And I like to entertain myself by pretending that we are, you know, mortal em enemies. But, <laughs> um, but, but in fact, that's exactly right. We have so, so much more in common than not. Um, both of us are, are, what we're exploring is how to understand what we eat and why we eat what we eat and, and, and try to get to the bottom of, of, um, the, the process of how you bring your food from the pasture to your table. Um, he, he, we're, we're, industrial farming is a big deal for both of us, and uh, or a big deal in terms of we don't like it. And uh, I think that, that the only difference between me and Jonathan Saver 4 is that um, I think we could both watch a, for instance, humane slaughter of a healthily raised pig and appreciate that that was you know an admirable great you know way to do that I could just carve a pork chop off of that and eat it afterwards and 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 he couldn't which I I get I get but uh he you know he and I are both um and it's so many people it's such a big it's just the it, it's all about transparency it's all about we've we've all realized I don't like the fact that I don't, I can't see what has happened, you know, what's in that meat, what came, you know, how it was raised, that, 
it has become unacceptable to more and more people. Uh, and, and, and we're both coming from that same place. So I think we're, we're John Sanford and other, you know, ethical vegetarians, we don't have, we're, we have more in common than not. Yeah, it would be interesting to see both of you on a panel together. Cage match. Me and me. <laughs> I think I could kiss, kick his ass, honestly. But, but, but yes. No, it would be fun. I actually, it's, it's hilarious because we've never actually met. We've never but, met. But um, I, I, I think we'd, we'd have a nice conversation. I really do. How did the fame you received from Julie and Julia affect your career path and your personal life? Um, That's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I see where you're going with this. Um, no, I, I think that that. Um, well, there were several different sort of ramping ups of of effect. Uh, you know, I started the blog, the Julie Julia Project, in 2002 at, when I was, you know, working stiff, miserable like everybody else, uh, secretary and. Um, and that proved to be an amazing jumping off point for me, uh, which is not what I was expecting. And it did. It changed, you know, the blog to the book, having a book deal, that changed my life profoundly. Um, being able to just uh, make a living as a writer was extraordinary. Being able to not work in a government office was extraordinary. Um, having some, enough money to move out of my, you know, crappy apartment was extraordinary. And... You know, the, the movie comes later, and in fact, the changes that a movie brings to your life are, um, while very dramatic for a few weeks, sort of, they, they, they come and go. It's, 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 it's amazing. You're, it's like you're dipped into the Hollywood water for three weeks, and then you're dipped out, which, which is great. I don't want to be there. It's, it's a lovely place to visit. But, um, but it did. It, cha it changed my life quite a bit, and... Um, and definitely changed my marriage and uh, was, I think what happened was that I, you know, in our case, my husband and I had been married for a very long time and, and we had been together since we were 18. So we'd basically grown up together. And the acknowledgement of, 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 of myself is, oh, now you're a writer. I'm going to pay you to do that. I'm going to change your life. And, kind of sparked a lot of um, c confusion for me because I didn't think of myself as anything other than one half of a marriage. <laughs> it was very difficult for me to sort of think, oh, I'm, doing, I'm, so, I'm supposed to be something on my own. I'm supposed to be my own person in some way. And that got me very confused, which opened up my life to a lot of uh, weird happenings, I guess. Well, speaking of the movie, did did they allow you to have any influence over how you were portrayed? No, no, no not no. really, not really. You know, I, 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 I sold the rights, and uh, I had a couple of long lunches with uh, Nora when she was Nora Efron. Like, Nora, like we're best of friends. Nora Efron when she was uh, writing the screenplay, and she, you know, she's a very, she's a really smart woman, and and asked very perspicacious questions, and you know. So there's a lot in there that she got from me and in our interviews that's right on. But it wasn't like I had any, I, I had a yes or no, yay or nay vote. Uh, it was all, it was all Nora's baby once, once that got going, which is great because Nora knows how to make movies and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I read in an, a recent interview that you are planning to move away from the memoir to fiction, so mm -hmm. what can we expect from a Julie Powell novel? Well, you know, I think, um, well, I'm working on my first, it's early days, so who knows, but, uh, you know, I think, I think food's always good, I, what I find is that I always turn to food as a sort of, um, prism through, through which to look at characters and, and society and all sorts, you know, all man manner of things. I think food is just something I'm always going to turn to, so it's going to be there. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of, I'm a geek, so there's going to be some, there's going to be some sci-fi, there's going to be some, some, some cool, I don't know, alternative world stuff 
very Joss Whedon, if, I mean, if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to reading it, for well, sure. Well, well, we'll see. I hope it's worth reading. We'll see. Thanks for talking to us, too. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely.